everybody. It's so nice to see you, my friend. This is Tim, the Beast of the Marching Arts, and I'm here with somebody I really like, Paul Richardson. Paul, how are you? Uh, any day I get to talk to Tim Hitton is a good day for me. So Aww, That's so <laughs> nice. Well, listen, I mean, any day you get to stop whatever you're doing and talk about marching stuff for a while, marching arts and marching band and drum corps, and there's all kinds of stuff going on. So, Paul, thanks for, for talking to me today and being a part of this conversation. Oh, I'm, I'm loving it, man. Let's go. Yeah, absolutely. So everybody, if you're if you're watching live or you're watching later anyway, I hope that you will check out all the stuff that's going on right now. Paul, you're a part of a webinar tomorrow night um, about money and values. And uh, what's the name of it? I should have had this toad up. <laughs> uh, making your money match your values. <laughs> that's right. It's just a great idea for a, for a webinar. So Paul is very smart. Paul, you you know a lot about financial stuff. You've worked with a lot of marching groups and helped a lot of people earn their dues, figure out how to make money for dues. That's how you are part of the Paying for Drum Corps course. That's free, everybody. If you know anybody that's marching drum corps, um, they can take this free one-hour presentation. That gives Paul gives them all kinds of great ideas. about. Just go to payingfordrumcorps.com or go to Marching Arts Education. You can find that. Um, so that's happening. And then the webinar tomorrow night. Before we jump into the webinar, I do want to say a couple more things right now. Um, the podcast is out right now. Paul, you might find this really interesting. Larry Visconti Jr. has been a part of the Sunrisers Senior Drum and Bugle Corps for 50 years. Wow. 50 years, which is very cool. And I mean, there are a lot of people that have been around drum corps for a really, really long time. I think about my own corps, the Phantom Regiment, and like, you know, there are some people that are on the cook team and on the sewing team that have been around since I was there. You know, and I marched in the early 80s. I'll admit, everybody, I'm, I've been around a while. So anyway, that's exciting. So, Paul, do you know anybody that's been around drum corps forever? Oh, man. I, I can't think of anybody for 50 years. Uh, I remember my time, my time marching with Blue Knights, and there's some volunteers um, that I, oh man, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the name. There's somebody that kind of just retired out of that in the last couple of years um, who was there when I was marching in the uh, 2001, I think was my, was my last year there. So, uh, and then Blue Stars, the Furlano family um, has been a part of that organization since before I started marching there in the late 90s. And they're still very, very active, obviously. So yeah, so every drum corps has these, has oh, these yeah. families. So very, Larry is uh, on the podcast right now with Dave Hobart, who's the core director there at the Sunrise. It's really interesting. He talks about he's done everything from play a snare drum. He learned to play trumpet one year. He's been on the pit. He he played a character one year and got murdered in every show, which I think sounds like really fun, uh, <laughs> you know. And then he talks about all the different ways that he ended up dying and what happened and. It's, it's, a, it's a fun story. So you might check that out on the, on the current podcast. And they're having a roast for him to raise money for the Sunrisers. <laughs> and you know that is going to be an interesting <laughs> evening when everybody, I mean, come on, you start telling drum corps stories. Did you got 50 years of drum corps stories? Oh, man. <laughs> it's fantastic. Anyway, so I, I, I think everybody should just, even if you can't go, just go buy a ticket to the roast just to, to support Larry and support the Sunrisers. We want all these cores, including these DCA cores like Sunrisers, have been around forever. So anyway, that's going on. On Thursday, the podcast is coming. We're going to talk about, everybody, we're, this is Paul Richardson. We're going to talk about his webinar that's coming up tomorrow night. But first, I have to tell you, on Thursday, sort of the opposite, Paul, is I talked to a band director who's a really great band director that's been around a while, but... He started at a brand new school this year. And, I mean, like a brand new school. So he sort of set the school up, say, setting up this band program from scratch. And he has band members, like his marching band this year, had nobody that had ever marched before. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they were all freshmen. It's one of those things where they're going to add a class every year. And so we had a whole marching band where there were no seniors for everybody to look at and see how do you do stuff or setting up, you know, where do I put my instrument? Like all of that was from scratch. So... Um, Joshua Tillman, really great band director in the state of South Carolina, talks to me about how his fall went with his brand new school. It was very interesting. You know, the first high school drumline I ever taught was in uh, the second year of existence, and they started freshman and sophomore. So when I came in, there was no senior class. It was just juniors. And again, very, very fresh. And, um, you know, what a what an interesting experience because, I mean, it was year number two, so they're really weren't any traditions, right? Like we were actually setting the traditions in year two, because if you did the same thing you did in year one, now it's kind of, you know, now it has the chance to be a tradition, right? Uh, <laughs> but yeah, what a, what a really cool experience, man. Yeah. So anyway, that's a podcast that's coming out Thursday. 
If you're a member at Marching Arts Education, you can see the video version of all this stuff, which I think is hopefully really cool. So if you're a member, just sign into the website, go to the member video area, and you'll see both of these conversations. They're actually both up already. You get a head start on Joshua's conversation. So anyway, Paul, back to it. Paul Richardson. Um, tell everybody briefly like what, what your history was with helping marchers learn to pay their dues and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I um, most of my experience comes with the 15 years I was with uh, an indoor program, uh, Gateway Percussion, a um, world-class WGI group, right? And that's actually where a lot of um, my experience with that comes from, because we, we kind of discovered early on um, that, you know, a certain subset of members always had trouble paying dues, right? That's every program that is not unique to, to our program. And we tried a, a handful of different strategies. The one that seemed to work the best was when we actually s kind of identified those members early and worked with them to make a plan, right? So instead of instead of having a, a very, you know, combative, like, hey, here's the dues, figure it out, and then move on, it was more like, I'm going to put my arm around you, the student, let's go figure out a strategy. And, you know, I kind of discovered that most of those situations were, uh, as much as anything, just a lack of financial education. And so I kind of became de facto financial counselor every year for, you know, for a handful of students. And um, and then, you know, the same tactics are very useful paying for DCI dues as, as WGI dues. So, um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of where that experience came from and, and just kind of snowballed from there. And um, uh, yeah, and it turns out I, I really enjoy that. And it's a conversation that I'm really comfortable having in a space where most people in this music world, the marching arts world are, are not very comfortable talking about money. And that's not an exception, right? Most people in a, you know, in, in the world right now are not comfortable talking about money. So, so yeah, I love to, you know, be able to have these kind of conversations, Tim, with you and your audience, just uh, to maybe help normalize, you know, that, that, that piece about, about finding, yeah. right. It's, it's, yeah. it's only scary till it's not right. Just like everything else you've ever done in your life. Yeah. And our, our, our culture does not think you should talk about money. Nobody talks about if they're in debt or if they have a lot or whatever, like it's just not polite, but sometimes you need to have conversations and Paul, you are the man because I think you're so approachable. You're so friendly. You're non-threatening. You know, you're like a big teddy bear, I think in some ways. So <laughs> maybe that, maybe that's just make it funny. Hey, by the way, we're talking to Paul Richardson. He has a webinar tomorrow night making, I can't remember the name. What is it again? Uh, making your money match your values. I really should have, Memorize that before we start it. Because it's tomorrow night, everybody. Paul and I will be there. He's going to give you share advice. If you're watching, type something in the comments. Let us know where you're from or if you have questions for Paul. So, Paul, tomorrow night, making your money match your values. We're going to talk about money. You're going to give us advice. If you're watching live, anybody, you can ask, ask questions. You know, like, what about this? Or wait a minute, tell me more about that. We can type those in as you're watching the webinar. So give us a little bit of a nugget, Paul. Sure. Like, what's one of the things you might tell somebody about this idea of values and money and making that work? Um, yeah, so so I'll say this. Um, I think the most important part of a program's budget is your mission statement. Because if you don't know where you're going, if you don't have a great roadmap, if you don't understand the values of your program and what you're really trying to create, um, then you're you're at risk for spending money on things that are not actually serving your mission, right? Um, when you're talking about finite resources like time, like money, if anything that you say yes to, you are inherently saying no to something else, right? And that's that's kind of the the conversation that I want to have and that idea that I want to get across. Like I'm also down to go, you know, uh, uh, answer specific questions with numbers attached to it. But more than anything, I really just want to kind of share that that idea, that framework, and just how that can play out in your program and and you know some some tips and tricks that might kind of help you make sure that you're spending your valuable resources in the, the best way to serve your program. Yeah, I love that. By the way, thanks everybody for watching. <clears throat> Hello, uh, Facebook user from Dallas, Fort Worth. Hey. I wonder what the weather's like in Dallas today. <laughs> I didn't check that out. It's really, we've been really, I know we're such a segue, but we're like really, we've been really, really cold down here in Florida where I am, which is not like in the thirties, everybody. I'm not just making this up. And then anyway, we're back in the seventies today, which I'm really happy. I shouldn't say that for all of you that have our snow. Are you, are you, are you in the snow event? Uh, oh. We're yeah. Yeah. We're, it's uh, going to be raining here in about an hour. And then by Thursday we'll have, you know, uh, hopefully some snowmen out in the front yard and my kids sledding. That would be awesome. Okay. So you know, there's the happy, positive side. 
<laughs> looks like it's sunny in Dallas, which is good. Yeah, the happy side to snow. Of course, a few days later when it gets all sludgy and mess, I'm ready to – I'm glad I'm not there. But I hope that you do have some fun with snowmen and sledding because that is – but I remember – boy, this is way off the topic. But I remember when I was in college in Knoxville, Tennessee, that was the first time I really saw snow because, I mean, in Atlanta we sometimes had snow, but, like, I saw a real snow. And everybody was grabbing – this is so like off topic, but everybody was grabbing the cafeteria trays. It's like sneaking. I don't know how you sneak a cafeteria tray. And I guess they grabbed them and ran. But anyway, and then they're all sliding down the streets and the hills in these cafeteria trays. You know, no, nobody got hurt, I'm sure, the whole time. But in anyway, right. college, you know how that works. But anyway, we're talking about money. Tomorrow night, everybody, you can sign up to watch for free. Just go to Marching Arts Education. Click right there on the, on the homepage where there's a link to this webinar. Paul, I, I think the idea, like, if I do spend money here, I'm not spending money somewhere else. Like, that's an interesting way to look at it. Somebody once told me once, if you want to find out what you really value, look where your money's going. Like, what are you spending money on? That's how you know what's really important to you. You know, whether that's dinners or movies or gaming or like whatever it is. Uh, that's it's That's so true. And this is... I mean, this is really a personal finance concept that also applies to your um, to your program, to your business, to whatever that you're doing, right? Like if you are somebody that loves going to like concerts and live shows and sporting events and you haven't been in a while, um, maybe because they're, you know, canceled or, or whatever else lately, right? Um, but uh, as those things are happening, you find you can't afford those tickets and yet you've got like you just bought a brand new car for 30 grand. Like do you value your car more than you value the live shows? Like, have you even asked yourself that question? Right. Like, um, you know, cause a 400 was a $450 car payment versus you could have bought a used car for a whole lot less. And then you'd have a couple hundred bucks a month for concert tickets. So it's just, you know, a lot of people don't ask those questions from a personal standpoint. Um, and, and then, you know, even fewer, um, people ask that question, of their, of their programs, right. Of their business or, or whatever else. But um, yeah, at the, at the end of the day, like if I'm looking at a budget for a program um, you know, I, I kind of, I, I look at the numbers first. Right. And then I start asking questions like, Hey, is this really more important than this? Cause you're spending a lot more money here than you are here. Is that on purpose? Or like, like how did you get in that situation? And then just kind of asking those questions to help, you know, leadership, you know, really dig in and, and, uh, you know, and usually there's a great, well thought out answer and that's fantastic. And it's just confirmation for them, but often there's not. And, no. and that's a point. <laughs> no way there. I would say usually nobody has any idea how they're spending their money. Come on, everybody. Even in your, even in your band programs or your color guard or whatever, you know, I remember like having a conversation with, oh gosh, Joe, what's his name? That was, uh, oh, oh God, I'm totally, okay. I'm totally blank. And anyway, really highly respected, independent winter guard guy here in Florida and God, Joe, I'm so sorry. I can't even think of his guard right now. It's just totally. Anyway, he was talking about like, he's, they, they ended up spending an exorbitant amount of money on ice, like for weekend camps and bringing ice and having drink, like, like they, like filling up coolers, like he, like over the course of a season, like that was a big, but they never even thought about it. And it's like, well, where's all our money going and why do we not? So anyway, knowing where your money's going, Paul, I say this all the time. I'm going to get myself in trouble. We're, everybody, we're talking about the webinar with Paul Richardson tomorrow night about where money and values. Gosh, what is it called, Paul? Uh, making your money match your values. To be fair, I actually have it written on the other screen, and I'm looking at it. It is well, kind I, of like why don't I have it up on my screen? It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's so. But anyway, I just let you keep saying it. That this is not only about your own money, which will be helpful to all of us, but it's also about how you use the money for your whatever group you're a part of. Whether you're in charge of it and you're setting that budget, or you're working with your band boosters, or you're trying to create an indoor drumline situation that works. Um, Paul, I talk about this all the time. Like I will go see a marching band show and they have props and colors and they bought show shirts and they cannot play their way out of a paper bag. And I'm thinking, you know, really these people need to have a conversation. Like, should we have gotten like a woodwind tech and maybe a brass guy to come into rehearsals and let's really do some music education or do we want to have like all the frills and the colors and the, I mean, I love the colors and the props and the set pieces and everything, but if your kids can't play, I'm not, I don't care what those props well, look like. Well, but I'll say this, right. If it's intentional, I don't have a problem with it. Like if, if they sat down and they said, you know what, we want to have the best set design 
in the region, right? Like we want to have this set that just knocks everybody's socks off. We don't care how the band sounds. If that was an intentional conversation, maybe I disagree with that. Maybe I don't, but it doesn't matter. If that was intentional and that's what they wanted to do and they were successful on executing that, like high five, man. <laughs> like, I mean, for, but that's kind of the whole point is, is, is that intentional? Now I would say most of the time it's not right. Like very few band directors that I've ever met are like, man, we want to have the best set. Okay, and that's it. Like we're good. Like that's all we want. Like I don't, <laughs> kids don't need to move good. They well, don't need to sound the problem good. is, it's like every a lot of times you get into this thing. Like, well, what's gonna win? You know, like what are the judges <laughs> looking for? Oh, and that guy down the street. You know, their band won everything, and they had like all this stuff. You know, so you start playing that game, and you don't realize. I call it concentrating on the dessert and not dealing with any of the meat and veggies that you really need. That's what I call it. Everybody looking at the dessert. That's the fun part. <laughs> right. And I love me a good dessert. But anyway, but this, this is part of it, everybody. This is what we're going to talk about, making your money match your values. Did I get it right? Tomorrow night, yeah, you did. Nice. 8 Good p.m. Work. Eastern here at Marching Arts Education. You can sign up to watch. Paul will be there for free. Now, for some reason, you cannot be there and you want to ask questions and participate. The recording is always up the next day. So you can see Paul's handsome mug the next day on video. And I will try to stay off screen as much as possible. And you will all appreciate that from me. But anyway, that's going on. Talking about some money stuff, and and Paul, I just I appreciate you sharing your expertise and your experience in all this with all of us. Sometimes you need to um, have hard conversations and talk about difficult stuff. Our society right now is doesn't seem to be a big fan of talking about hard stuff or feeling uncomfortable. But I feel like right now we need to we have that conversation about our money. Um, I did that in my own world. I can tell you over the last few years, like I really hunkered down, had some uncomfortable conversations about my own budget and things are going a lot better. Once I really understood where my money was going, I wasn't, you know, got my credit cards paid off all that stuff. It really matters that there's a plan and some thought behind it. And you're going to give us some concrete ideas for that. That's the plan. Um, yeah. Yeah. What's the great quote? Um, uh, the price of an exceptional life is uncomfortability. So you know, yeah, find only things... if you were uncomfortable can yeah. grow. That is yes. part of just growing. No, nobody ever got good at anything by just doing the most comfortable thing in the path of least resistance. Like that's that's things that we're preaching to our students all day long, right? Uh, it's the same. It's the same thing, right? Just we we just forget that sometimes as leaders, as you know, educators, and that we just kind of forget that the same still applies to us. And um, you know, and it's human nature, right? Like we we all. Nobody wants to, nobody wakes up in the morning and just like, man, I want to do something really hard today. But you know, like that, that's like you said, that's where the growth is. That's what we got to do. But so. sometimes it's fun to do things yeah. that are really, that hurt. And are, like, come on. I used to love standing out on a drum corps field, sweating my butt off, like either teaching or marching. And like, it was fun because I was getting better and I was part of something. And I saw with a reason for the pain. So the same thing in the gym, you know, like you, you have to hurt in the gym and push your muscles in your body. But I got to the point where I love that. Like I like to sweat at the end of a martial arts lesson and feel like I have really worked today. I feel better. Yeah, it was work. And sometimes work can be fun. You know, I mean, it's it's you got to have that part of your life. Hey, if you're watching live, tell us where you're watching from. And if you have any questions for me or Paul, Paul Richardson has a webinar tomorrow night. Making your values match your money. That's wrong. You when, almost. <laughs> What is it, Ken? <laughs> Making your money match your values. <laughs> yeah, this is Tim Hinton, uh, the Beast of the Marching Arts. We're talking of the Marching Roundtable Live here. We're talking about marching stuff, and that's always fun. And we're going to be doing this, but everybody watch for these on, on pretty much every Tuesday is my plan to show up here and have somebody to talk to and talk about something cool and sort of let you know what's going on in the podcast. By the way, next week, the importance of technique and there's a new course that's going to be coming out next Monday, Flag Spinning for Beginners. Paul, I know so many people that are in the world of the marching and they don't have any idea how to spin a flag. And I'm telling you, if you're on the field, I don't care if you're a drummer or brass tech or whatever, you need to know some, you need to have some idea of how that works. And so there's a new course where you can sign up and learn to spin the basics of spinning a flag. I mean, you can learn all the fancy, it includes all the fancy tosses, but it learns the basics. You need to know, like, just like I think, Paul, you're, you're a drummer, right? I, I'm a drummer. It's true. Yeah, everybody should know something uh, about how to hold sticks and make, like, we just need to appreciate all the parts of all the stuff happening around us. So anyway, next week we're going to talk about the, the spinning for, are you, do you know how to spin a flag, Paul? You know, so true story, my senior year of high school, I went through winter guard auditions. 
I had no intention of marching and they knew that. And at that, you know, at that point I knew the staff, but I just, I, I don't even, I couldn't even tell you why. Maybe I was trying to date somebody in the guard. I don't, I don't know. I, I can't remember my motivations, but I will say like, I went through just, you know, kind of the, the basics, the basic part before they kind of cut everybody that had no business being there, like, like me. Um, and I did. So I, I had a few hours of, of really good instruction and I actually practiced and um, terrible, but I, <laughs> I have, uh, I did, I gained just a ton of respect for, uh, for that world. Cause man, even the most basic thing, like, you know, it, it's a, uh, it, it's hard, just like everything it, it, we do in this marching world, it's hard to do the basics right. And uh, yeah, so, so I love that, man. I might actually go check that class out. I still today would try and do drop spins like with a broom occasionally, yeah. like, like, you know, when my kids aren't watching and cause I, cause I'm going to, oh, yeah. I, I, when I was, when I was learning all this and got excited about color guard, I was like spinning my rake. Like you're supposed to be out there raking leaves and I'm like tossing the <laughs> rake around. That's actually kind of dangerous, but anyway, no, it's, it's really great. Glad that you had that experience. So that's coming up next week. And by the way, we're talking about this Larry Visconti, who's on the podcast that's out right now. He's 50 years in the Sun Rogers Drum and Bugle Corps. He talks about the fact, I asked him, he said he was a drummer and he was a snare drummer and a really good drummer. And, and then one year they needed, like he's been around for 50 years. At some point they said, we, we really need some trumpets. So he learned to play the trumpet. And I said, well, how was that? This is on the podcast. You can hear it. If you listen, he's like, I, he actually says this, Paul. He says, I, I learned a whole new appreciation for, for breath. And how hard the brass players are working. Because he's like, you know, he didn't really think too much about his breathing when he's drumming and marching around. That when you're a brass player, like, that's what you think about. Like, you cannot lose your breath because that's how you make your sound. So it was interesting that he had that experience, sort of learned to appreciate. Wow. All right. I'm, I'm officially queuing that, that podcast up. Yeah. Right and if you're now. a member, by the way, you can see the video version. So make sure you check that out. All right. So it's time to wrap this thing up, Paul. Tomorrow night, Wednesday night. February 2nd, 8 p.m. Eastern. He's going to be talking about making your money match your values. Did I get yeah. that right at all? You did. You uh, Like two for five. It's good. <laughs> so anyway, if this is not only for your personal stuff, which will be helpful, but also how are you spending the money for the group you're working with? How What is your budget? Where are your priorities? How is that? Like this is something really worth talking about. It's going to be very, very valuable. If you can't watch live, the recording is going to be up the next day. And Paul, of course, Paying for Drum Corps, a free one-hour presentation. Anybody can take it, Marching Arts Education, or you can just go to payingfordrumcorps.com. Um, great, great information to help people. Like, look, everybody, if you are if you know somebody that's Marching for Drum Corps, don't let them be one of those people that just makes one of those GoFundMes and starts begging on social media. <laughs> like, I have a really hard time sending those people money, you know? But the person that comes to me with a plan and something personal for me, you know what, Paul, I know we need to end this, but it's so interesting. One of your points is to make it personal, right? And reach out to the Absolutely. right people in the right way. We're talking about paying for drum corps now. And um, somebody just the other day posted on Facebook that they had gotten a request from someone from the color guard where they marched in winter guard years before. And the person has said, Hey, I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm marching in this winter guard, this really high, high world-class winter guard, this fall. I need some help. I'm hoping you can support me. And then he included, man, I really loved this guard back in 91. And she was like, of course, that's the year she, and he had done his research and he knew that she had marched in 91 and 91 was a great show and he made it personal. And she was like, she says, I immediately went back at it and looked and said, I wonder how much he needs. And I thought, brilliant. This is one of your points. It's like, make it personal. And he made a connection with her because he knew where, she, when she had been a part of this group and like, and then somebody else on Facebook's like, I'll give this guy money. You know, how to, give me his, like, so like there's, it, it's just doing it smart. It, and that probably only took a, a couple of minutes. I mean, uh, yeah, like I'm, I'm not amazing at, at uh, social media stalking, but I know people who are of marching age are probably really good at that. It pro <laughs> I, uh, yeah. So it, it probably took just a minute or two to do that and just to drop that one sentence in. And so in an hour, you could hit, you know, 30, 40, 50 alumni with that same message that is going to make them 10, 20, 30 times more likely to, like, to engage, right? Like, they're either going to keep scrolling or they're going to see something engaging and they're just going to stop. And if you can get them to stop, then then you've, you've kind of done everything that yeah. you can do there. And it's it's huge. huge. I, mean, I, sh I shouldn't probably say this, but if somebody from the fan regiment came to me and said, <laughs> man, did I love that horn solo you had in Spartacus in 82? I love this. Like, I'm telling you, I'm writing texts. You know what I mean? Like, it's so ridiculous, but like, it's how it works. Like make it, anyway, that's part of the brilliant information that Paul shares in the 
paying for drum corp. Somebody has a question. Hey, thank you, Facebook user, for, for being here and watching live. Is there a website or a list where marching performers can go to look up summer inter scholarships or grants that are helpful? Wow. I have not found one. Um, I, I've not found one. I don't know that that it exists. Um, I know there's several different organizations out there. Most of those scholarships are run through the the cores or the alumni associations for those cores. But I am I am absolutely not aware of of that. Um, Facebook user, whoever you are, if you find that, like, please let me know. I would love to have that information to share. Um, but I, I think the last time I really dug in and looked at that was probably um, I, I think this fall, and I could not find any any kind of universal. Um, wow. catalog. It's a great maybe question. That's, maybe it's that's a need. something we need to do. It's a need too. I really, I really think it is. And you know, you know, all these cores have internships, and I know that DCI has internships, and Music for All has internships. But like a way to call that information, I don't know. Um, that's a very interesting question. So yeah, everybody, you know, you can always reach me um, at the Marching Roundtable or at Marching Arts Education. There's lots of contact him kind of links and things. So if anybody watching this knows the answer to that or has more information, please let us know and we will share it. And so that's a really good question. I, I would love to update the paying for drum corps material with that if it exists. So that, that's, yeah, so yeah. seriously. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, and it may be that you have to do there right now, you just have to sort of go to all the different groups and look it up and find it. Cause there are, there are such things and there are scholarships. Like we have scholarships that we do here at Marching Arts Education, you know, and there are some through DCI and all kinds of different groups. So they're out there. It might take a little legwork. I like the idea of trying to call that some of that information. Yeah, I would. I would say. Um, I would say if you know the core or or that, that you're looking to march, if um, if you know the organization, I would say first start with the alumni association there, and then I would start with um, from there. I would go on to kind of things that are more specific to your world and your instrument, right? Like um, uh, C Vine. They they do you know cymbal gloves and horn gloves. They actually started as a cymbal scholarship. Um, they still have a very active scholarship program. Just as one example, if you're if you're a marching cymbal player out there, um, there's there's still a few of the you left in DCI. <laughs> I wish there were more cymbal lines out there, but it's a whole other topic. Um, yeah, like Steve has got a great scholarship program, and and uh, Chelsea who who runs that is is a fantastic human being. So, um, but again, there's there's more than just that out there. But yeah, oh man, I don't know, I don't know how to how to wrangle all that together. Hmm. Now I'm thinking. <coughs> okay, we have a new task. <laughs> thank you for watching everybody thank you everybody that commented it's wonderful to be friends with people here in the world of social media and to have these fun conversations paul you're awesome i appreciate all the work that you've done over the years and for helping me create the uh well you did it and i sort of helped facilitate this paying for drunk war uh resource that's available for everybody and of course like we said tomorrow night paul will be there talking about making your money match your values did i get it right at all you did. You did. No, you're, you're, you're good, man. <laughs> I should have totally written that down. But anyway, tomorrow night, thanks for talking to me, Paul. You're awesome. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Look for these every Tuesday and other times. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Paul.